Welcome back to kinetics and reaction mechanisms. In the previous videos, we've shown that as we increase the temperature, the rate constant of a given reaction tends to increase, meaning that in some way, temperature and the rate constant for a reaction are proportional to each other. We have this equation that relates the rate constant as being equal to the Arrhenius factor, or the collision factor, times the exponential of the negative activation energy for the reaction divided by RT, where temperature is in Kelvin. What we can do as shown is we can take the natural log of both sides and we get this equation right here. Now we're going to use this equation to solve a type of problem where we want to actually calculate the various quantities here. We want to calculate the activation energy, we want to calculate the Arrhenius factor, um, given a few rate constants and temperature values. So these things right here are fairly easily measured, but calculating activation energy and the Arrhenius factor A are a lot more difficult. One thing I want you to notice is if I consider the natural log of K as being more or less my dependent variable and 1 over T as being my independent variable, where natural log of k is my y and 1 over t is my x, what I can also say is that this quantity, negative activation energy over the, rate, over the ideal gas constant, could be my slope, and then natural log of the Arrhenius factor will be b, my y-intercept. So if I group the terms like this, then if I graph natural log of k versus 1 over the temperature, I should get a straight line. All right. Now, this is a fairly simple problem from an inorganic class, but it's going to be the same type of thing. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to look at these temperatures. All right, so I'm going to put these in an Excel file or numbers, depending. So I have, let's come over here. So I'm going to make, these are temperatures, and these are going to be in Kelvin. All right, temperatures in Kelvin. So I have 275 and 825. 275, 825. Over here, these are going to be my rate constants in per second. Those are my rate constants. I see my first rate constant is 0 0.382. 0 0.382. And my second rate constant is 0 0.671. So 0 0.671. Now, if I go back and look at what I want to plot, I'm going to have to plot 1 over the temperature for my x, and then my y-axis is going to be natural log of the rate constant. So I need to take the reciprocal of all these temperatures. Let me go ahead and do that. So let me take, this is going to be 1 over temperature, which means, oops, let me just put it like this, 1 over temperature, which means my units are going to be 1 over Kelvin. So let's take the reciprocal. I'm going to take 1 divided by, and this is in cell B2, so cell B2. And then I'm just going to drag this down. Here we go. And over here, I need to take the natural log of the rate constant. Natural log of, oops, this is lowercase k, the rate constant. So that means I need to take equals ln. Here's my natural log. And then I'm going to take this of C2. And then I'm just going to drag this down like that. All right, so those are my... This is my 1 over temperature. This is my natural log of k. Now all I'm going to do is I'm going to graph these. Remember, the variable that's on the, right, on the left side is going to be your x-axis, which is what I want here. So insert, chart, 2D scatter, and I get something that looks like this. What I'm going to do is I'm going to hit axis. I'm going to go ahead and label these just for the sake of practice. And then let's get a chart title. All right, so this is going to be natural log of k versus 1 over the temperature. All right, this right here, these are going to be, this is my natural log of the rate constant. And then this right here is going to be 1 over, oops, 1 over the temperature, and that's going to be in units of 1 divided by Kelvin, or inverse Kelvin. Now what I want to do here is I want to plot a trend line. So here's a trend line. I'm going to get the equation and show the r squared value. All right, so this is my equation right here. 
All right, let's think about what this tells us. My slope m is negative 232.38. Remember that the slope is equal to negative activation energy over r. So I know r, that's a constant. I can solve for the activation energy. So let's see what, what that gives us. All right, so my slope, negative 232.38 negative 232.38, negative 232.38 is equal to, and this is negative activation energy divided by the gas constant, all right? Now notice we can go ahead and cancel out the negative signs because they're on both sides. So that means if I multiply 232.38 times the ideal gas constant, let's use the value 8.314. The reason I do that is because this form of the gas constant has joule units, joule per mole Kelvin, then that means I'm gonna get an activation energy equal to this magnitude. Let me run this into the calculator, 232.38 times 8.314. And this is going to be equal to 1,932 joules per mole, okay? If I wanted to express this in kilojoules, I'd say 1.932 kilojoules per mole, and that is going to be my answer for the activation energy, all right? So that means if I, when I plot these, I can tell a lot from this graph because of the slope. Now the y-intercept I can also tell some stuff from, all right? So the y-intercept is negative 0.1173, negative 0.1173, negative 0.1173, and based on this, that's equal to the natural log of the Arrhenius factor. Now how do I undo a natural log? Well, I'm going to take E to both sides. And that's going to allow me to solve for the Arrhenius factor. Let's do that. I'm going to plug that in. Exponential negative 0.1173. And I get that the collision factor, or Arrhenius factor, is going to be 0 0.8895. And that's my answer for this. And these values right here, these are pretty much the only things that you really need to be able to get out of a plot of natural log of the rate constant versus 1 over temperature. So hopefully that made sense. Make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel for future videos and notifications. Thank you very much.